Good morning. Let's get started. Um, any questions? Questions from last time? Questions? Questions, concerns, complaints? So first of all, let me bring to your attention this aid sheet that we have uh, posted uh, on, on Quercus. You can find it both on the front page on Quercus and also on the page dedicated to our lecture section. And uh, I will be using it quite a bit, especially this first part, which uh, uh, presents the three coordinate systems that we'll be using. The position vectors, differential length elements, differential surface elements, differential volume elements. So I'll be using those uh, three sets of formulas quite a bit in um, uh, my lectures. So I do recommend that you print it out and you have it with you so that you become familiar with uh, the formulas and, and how to use them. It is a really a, a very big help. So this being said, I'd like to continue today the example that we started last time. And uh, that was the calculation of me, uh, the electric field from, um, oh, I turned off the microphone, sorry. Uh, the electric field from uh, a continuous charge distribution along the Z axis. So you can imagine this as a, a power line that is charged. And the problem with respect to uh, Coulomb's law that we had um, seen before is that now this charge is not a point charge. It is uh, continuously distributed along a wire, let's say, along the z-axis. And therefore, we need to apply this principle of superposition in order to uh, find the electric field that is being created. And uh, I am uh, giving here as a, an example, let me, okay, now the microphone is back, uh, an observation point along the y-axis, zero, y, uh, zero. Uh, I'm giving you some steps because the feedback what I hear many times when I teach this course uh, from uh, you, from students who are uh, attempting problems like this is I don't know how to start. So I give you the specific steps to think about problems like this. So the first step, and that I repeat what I said on Thursday, is actually to think which coordinate system. And uh, what we said on Thursday was that this problem has cylindrical symmetry in the sense that if you imagine that you are an observer and you are moving on a circle around this wire, you really don't see any difference in this distribution. It is like uh, moving around the uh, CN Tower and you don't know which side you are looking at because all you see is a concrete cylinder that is going up from the ground. So therefore, this uh, is an indication that the problem lends itself to the, the cylindrical coordinate system. Thinking more practically, if you have something that is like a wire, resembles a cylinder, you should use cylindrical coordinates. If it is a sphere, spherical coordinates. If it is a plate, like we will see in the second example, rectangular coordinates. So there is so many geometries, basically. And therefore, this first decision should not be that difficult. The second is goes back to the fact that Coulomb's law is talking about fields of point charges. And here, we don't have a point charge. So therefore, we have to analyze the distribution into point charges. So the second step is analyze And for this, the hint really is the given charge density itself. It is a linear charge density, dq over dz. And therefore, I solve this equation. And I say dq, the point charge, is rho l dz. Now, I'd like to remind you that 
I will be separating the coordinates of the sources from the coordinates of the observation points. And this is very important because my observer here is fixed. However, the sources extend along the z-axis, so they are not fixed. And hence, I'll be using prime coordinates for the sources. Sources meaning the charges. And for the observation point, which is fixed, unprimed regular coordinates, x, y, z. So this bookkeeping is necessary just to make sure that uh, we have this distinction between the one and the other. Uh, so therefore, here, my dq, rho L dz prime, is basically one point charge somewhere along this axis. So this dz means that I cut out of the wire a differentially small element dz, and that's where now this aid sheet is important because it tells you differential line elements, differential surface elements, which are important when you have surface charge densities, uh, differential volume elements, which are important uh, when you have volume charge density. So here we have a line charge density. dz is the differential line element, length element along uh, the z axis. And therefore, this is the one that uh, we uh, are dealing with here. And I give this point coordinates, prime coordinates, 0, 0, it is on the z-axis, z primed. So my charge dq is rho L dz. In fact, I will put here a prime because now I am uh, talking about a source uh, point charge dq, so in prime coordinates, and that's why I'm putting here the prime. And the position vector, which I will also call R primed, remember our notation from Coulomb's law, will be Z primed Z hat. What is the position vector? It's the vector that connects the charge to the origin. And therefore, it is along the Z axis. So you see it is this vector here. Okay. So then, uh, so that is the, uh, the second step. Uh, any questions up to this point? So the third step is to find the electric field of this uh, point charge dq at the observation point. Now I turn to Coulomb's law. Instead of using uh, on the left-hand side E for the electric field, this is electric field of a differentially small charge. I will call it DE. And otherwise, I will apply Coulomb's law, which is DQ by 4 pi epsilon naught R minus R primed cubed r minus r primed. Remember, this is magnitude, goes to the denominator. This is vector. And r is the position vector of the observation point. In that aid sheet, also, we give position vectors. It's actually on the top of the line for each coordinate system. And what is the position vector of the observer? The observer is at y 
at 0, y, 0, so therefore that will be y, y hat. And all in all, r minus r primed will be y, y hat minus uh, z primed z hat. And the magnitude of this vector, the length of this vector, is y squared plus z prime squared square root. So that uh, this vector, if you want to visualize it, so this is r primed, this is r, and the r minus r primed, remember how Coulomb's law works, uh, the electric field will be along the line that connects the charge and the observer. So r minus r prime from this right angle triangle will be square root of y squared plus z prime squared. So now I'm ready to put the formula together. dE will be equal to dQ. Now dQ is rho L dz prime. I will uh, put here dz prime with a different color because that will give me basically uh, the differential element that I need to integrate. So what do I need to integrate with? So that dz prime tells me that basically I need to integrate along the z axis. So I'm putting in the rest of the three halves okay so that's that's where we are any questions up to this point any questions so you see this dz prime tells me that i need to integrate and that makes sense along the z-axis. So the last step is actually to imagine that this dq goes all the way from minus infinity, the bottom of the wire, to plus infinity. And then through the integration, I add up all the electric fields that are being generated by each point charge. So the integration is a summation over differentially small charges, essentially. So we cannot have a sum anymore we need to have a, a, an integral. And at this point, it uh, becomes a mathematical problem. Let me go below the shadow here. So the total electric field will be, you see I'm putting this in, the expression. Okay, so this tells me that the integration happens with respect to z prime, which is the position, the, the coordinate of the z coordinate of the point charge that generated that dE. So therefore, this z prime varies along the entire wire. You can imagine this as a power line, the entire wire from minus infinity to plus infinity. So from this point, at this point, the uh, Electromagnetic problem has been formulated. You can put it, put this into a computer and do the uh, calculation. My uh, personal research area is computational electromagnetics, so I'm writing code to solve those equations. But at this point, the problem has been formulated and you can solve it. Obviously, this is uh, an integral that I can calculate analytically, so it happens to be uh, analytically uh, computable, but it, it wouldn't have to. It could have been a very general charge distribution in a cell, in a tissue for biological applications, for example. Um, so let me stop here and ask any questions. I saw many discussions as I was writing. So these are the steps. The last uh, step is compute the field. 
So you see here I have many uh, constants. For example, this one is a constant. Four by epsilon naught. And then inside here I have, as you see, two components, the y and the z component. These are Cartesian unit vectors. Cartesian unit vectors. Cartesian unit ve vectors are the only vectors, unit vectors, that are independent of position. So whenever I see Cartesian unit vectors within an integral, I can safely take them out. X, Y, Z always point towards the X, Y, and Z axis. They don't change. If you have the spherical unit vector r hat, that only needs to remain normal to a sphere. So therefore, depending on where you are on the sphere, its direction changes. And hence, if it is within an integral, it has to be accounted for this change. So here, these are constants. Then I have the first integral, which gives me the y component. Again, y here is the coordinate of the observer. So it is also a constant. I will also take it out. You see the integration is done with respect to z primed. And inside, I have an integral dz primed. And so this is 3 halves. Three halves. So this integral, let me just give you its uh, value, is 2 over y squared. And then the second integral is minus z hat, the z component. Uh, it has a z primed in the, in the numerator and the y squared plus z prime squared, three halves in the denominator. And of course, I have to close the bracket. So the second integral, who can guess the value right, by inspection? It is zero because it is an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of an odd function of z prime. You see I'm having here in the numerator a odd function, z prime, and the denominator an even function because it has z prime squared. So odd by even is odd. You integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity, so that is zero. And all in all, The electric field that we find in fact, um, you see I have there y over y squared. Um, Y squared, and uh, uh, that is in the y direction. So 2 over y squared in the y direction. Direction. So all in all, what we found is that the electric field that is generated by the distribution at this point, so we have all these charges here, is in the y direction. So that is the electric field at this point. And now the last step is to test whether this makes physical sense. So I will put actually a sense, uh, sorry, a step six. Step. 
if that makes physical sense. So it does make physical sense, first of all, because if you imagine any point charge dq here at z primed, you can always identify a symmetrically placed charge with respect to the observation point right here. So if this is uh, 0, 0, z prime, this is 0, 0, minus z prime, OK? So a symmetrically placed charge with respect to the y-axis right here. So that if you recall Coulomb's law, this point charge will create an electric field along this line like this. The other point charge, the symmetrically placed, will create an electric field like this. By symmetry, these two electric fields will have the same magnitude because the triangle you see over there is an isosceles triangle. It's actually this length is z prime squared plus y squared, and this length is also z prime squared plus y squared. So this is an isosceles triangle. The distance of those charges from the observation point is the same. The magnitude is the same. The only thing that changes is the direction. And you see that for these two fields, their components along the z direction will actually cancel out and will give you only one component along the y direction. So what we saw mathematically that the z component is 0 actually has this very simple physical meaning of, with a symmetry argument that no matter with which point charge you choose on the axis, you can always find the symmetrically placed so that the two generate fields with z components that cancel each other out. So this is the uh, first thing. The second is that as we uh, mentioned, positive charges like the ones that we have here, I consider this Rosa Bell to be positive. <laughs> the electric field points away from the charge distribution. And this is consistent with what we said before that uh, what we said before, that positive charges are sources, negative charges are sinks of electric field. So indeed, we expect the electric field lines to move away from the uh, positive charge. And I have to add a note here with a question for you. Now, we calculated the electric field for a specific point on the y-axis. What if we had a general observation point, P, with position vector Again, if you go to the aid sheet uh, in position vectors for cylindrical system, you will see that the position vector in general is r r hat plus z z hat. So what if we, we had uh, a situation where the charge distribution is here, still along the z axis? 
we still have the axis, the other axis here, y and z, and x. And now I have a general observation point somewhere here with this position vector. And you see this is r, r hat, and this is z, z hat. So the position vector of such a point is given as a superposition of these two vectors. You see, to go from the origin to the point, you go along the r direction and then up. So what field would you expect there? Any ideas? Of course, I can run again those six steps uh, to find the result, but uh, any ideas here? To do it without the integration. Any ideas? You see the coordinate systems are conventions of ours. I put the y-axis like there, and I could have put it somewhere else. Uh, the physics is that an observer to the wire sees an electric field coming towards them that is equal to rho L by 2 pi epsilon naught times the distance, their distance from the wire. Here, for this point P, the distance from the wire is R. So if I write the electric field in words, times a vector pointing perpendicular to the wire. So this vector is now the r hat unit vector which you see along the y-axis, it happens to coincide with uh, the y-unit vector. Remember, the r-hat unit vector is like this. So on the x-axis is along the x-axis, on the y-axis it is along the y-axis, and so on. So it varies on this circle r hat is x cosine phi plus y sine phi. And the distance from the wire is the r coordinate of the point. So in fact, we can say that this is equal to rho l by 2 pi epsilon naught r r hat. And if you want to confirm this mathematically and you are not uh, confident about this intuitive explanation, you can simply repeat this step and put this vector in the position vector here, r. In that case, r minus r primed will be z prime squared, and you can take it from there. The integral is exactly, uh, works exactly the same way. So in here you would get a result 2 over r squared, and uh, in here you would have an r in the numerator. So the result would be exactly the same. So this is the more general form of the result. If you want to visualize it, just a moment, I'll be right with you. If you want to visualize it, this is the wire and the electric field points outwards. Like this. 
or if you want to see the z axis into the board, which is more common. Uh, for example, we have a power line that uh, uh, is moving this direction, so you will have the electric field lines going radially outwards. So before I turn to the uh, question, uh, let me also add that you see the impact of this distribution here. If you have one point charge, the electric field strength reduces as one over distance squared. Here it reduces one over distance. Uh, yes, please, go ahead. It's okay. It was about the uh, vector, like the direction of the uh, electric field with respect to You wrote down that the vector pointing, the unit vector pointing perpendicular to the wire. That's just the R hat, right? That's right. Yes. Yes, please. So I have a question in terms of, as you said, right, when we are taking, a, in order to understand if our answer makes sense, we, we want to take a point which is equidistant from the origin and check if the, like, the effect is same or not. So does that mean like the result in it, which stays right now in the y, uh, y coordinate, is it the addition of du and du prime? Yes, yes, exactly. So let me draw it over there. So the question is on the argument that I presented to figure out that indeed the electric field was uh, pointing radially outwards. So the argument was like this. Uh, let's say my observation point, now the general observation point is this one here. And uh, I'm considering this dq. Now I repeat the same argument for a general observation point. Uh, since I'm dealing with dq, Coulomb's law applies. And therefore, I can right away say that the electric field of this point charge at the observation point will have to be along this line and coming radially outwards. But now for any such point, no matter if it is here or up there or wherever, I can identify a symmetrically placed point. And I can because you see the charge distribution is infinite. So no matter which point you give me, I can give a symmetrically placed dq. That generates an electric field of the same strength, but different direction. So now if I analyze into components, you see that these two will cancel out. The one points upwards, the other downwards. Uh, whereas the components that are radially outwards will reinforce. So therefore, the electric field will be pointing in the radial direction, always perpendicular to the wire. Make sense? Yes, please. Uh, in this example, the two points only have difference in the y, oh, sorry, in the z, z right? So they have the same y-axis. Uh, sorry, which, point, uh, which example? For P and uh, yeah. Yes. So what if it's, it have like difference in both intersects? How would you supervise it? Uh, no, this P could be anywhere. Uh, you see, this is uh, the angle phi. So this could be uh, at any point in space. In fact, uh, you can. You see, this position vector is general. And if you want to see that this is general, you can uh, uh, realize that r r hat is nothing else but x x hat plus y y hat. This is r r hat. And then z z hat. So this is a general position vector. It doesn't have to be on the plane of the board is this, if this is what you're asking. It can be anywhere. A bit hard to plot three-dimensional things, but it is three-dimensional. Okay. So these are the uh, steps. Second example. Electric field from infinite charged plane. So we have uh, all things infinite here. And again, remember that 
infinite basically means that you are sufficiently far from the edges. Uh, just like observing a very long power line from a schoolyard where you want to make sure that uh, safety limits for the exposure of students to the electric field are being satisfied and therefore you don't see the edges of the, uh, of the wire. And I can assure you really that these approximations work really well in such situations. So the uh, infinite charge plane here, which could have been a plate of a capacitor, is the xy plane. So I'm putting a charge distribution, surface charge distribution, from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity in all two directions. on this charged plane. So you can imagine that as the plate of a capacitor when you are far away from the edges and you don't care about what are the edge effects or the, uh, ed the fields near the edges. I'm interested in finding the fields very far uh, from the edges. So just like uh, we're interested, let's say, in PCBs like this, Right? In PC, uh, printed circuit boards like this. If you uh, are interested in what is the electric field between those two plates, deeply inside the printed circuit board, you are sufficiently far from the edges. So this approximation actually would give you a good idea of how the field looks like in there. So we now place an observation point right here at 0, 0, Z, and uh, I don't know what this is, the axis. So if you want to see a two-dimensional cut of this picture, just to clarify, I hope it is clear what I'm trying to show here. This is a Z axis. This is my observation point at 0, 0, Z. This is the Y axis. The X axis comes out of the board. And I have here this charged plane with the surface charge density rho sub s. So in this case, I'm dealing with a surface charge density in Coulomb per meter squared. So no matter what is the problem, I'm still uh, following the same steps. So the first step is to ask which coordinate system should I use? Any ideas? Which coordinate system should I use? How many would vote? I'm not using clickers or anything. How many would vote by raise of hands? Um, rectangular. Okay, uh, how about cylindrical? Spherical. So it makes sense, you have a rectangular plate here. Uh, you can right away conclude that the Cartesian system would be the most appropriate. The second uh, step is to find dq. So analyze, that is, the charge distribution into point charges. So the charge distribution is on the xy plane. is on the xy plane. It is a surface uh, charge density. So if you go to the aid sheet and, and you look at rectangular coordinate system, differential surface element, 
that will give you one of the uh, three differential surface elements will be the dx, dy, and I will call it dx prime, dy prime, because uh, I'm using prime coordinates for the sources. So if I go at a point right here with coordinates x prime, y prime, zero, and I vary my x prime coordinate and the y prime coordinate by dx prime, dy prime, I'm writing this differentially small element dx prime dy prime. If you go to your age sheet, you will see that there are differential surface elements for Cartesian coordinates. So this is what you will see there. Um, sorry. In fact, the x hat will be first. So why do I know that I need this one here? I know it because my plane is a z equal zero plane. So my z coordinate on that plane is fixed. So z doesn't change. dz is zero when you are on a plane of fixed z, like the one that we are right here. So z is fixed. This uh, charge distribution is on the plane z equal zero. Okay. So to create this plane, we have fixed z, and that means that dz here is 0, dz here is 0. So dx dy is what I need. So I take this magnitude, dx dy, I prime it, and I have my dq. My dq is rho s dx prime dy prime. And the position vector of this element, you see the coordinates is are x prime, y prime, zero. So I use the position vector for the Cartesian coordinate system. Again, that is in the aid sheet. And I put x prime, x hat plus y prime, y hat plus zero z hat. There is no zero coordinate. So that is my position vector. So what creates the uh, total electric field is the superposition of charges like this all over this infinite charged plane. Then the third step is to find the electric field of dq at the observation point and the observation point is on the z-axis, the position vector is 0 x hat, 0 y hat, z, z hat. Uh, z, by the way, is positive since I am on the positive z-axis, just like before it, y was positive since I was on the positive y-axis in the first example. So this is uh, my position vector. Another thing that I will, two more things that I will need to apply the formula are r minus r primed. So I need to subtract those two vectors. This is r minus r prime. And the magnitude of this You see some bookkeeping is necessary here with the primes and the non-primes. Plus z squared. So 
Euclidean uh, formula, you have the uh, coordinates squared added up and all being put under a square root. So that is the length of this vector. So we have a dq somewhere here and this, uh, the position vector is like this. The position vector of the observation point is like this. And the distance vector between the two connects the charge and the observer. So the electric field now from Coulomb's law is, let me put just as a reminder, the general formula. So I have found everything. The dq is rho s dx prime dy prime. Uh, these differential elements show me basically when I get to add up all the fields what kind of integration I will be doing. So dx prime dy prime just simply means that I, I will need to run an integral over x prime y prime because obviously I need to do this thought experiment where the dq moves all around this infinite charge plane. So that is really what we need to do mathematically but also physically. So for pi epsilon naught, then I have the distance three halves. And then I have again these three components, z, z hat minus x prime, x hat minus y prime, y hat. So the last part will be to integrate to find the total electric field. Let me take uh, right away constants out. This is the rho s by 4 pi epsilon naught. And then I will have now an integral over dx prime and dy prime. And what do I need to integrate? I have, as you see, a z component z divided by this uh, bracket in power of 3 halves minus x component x primed minus y component y primed three halves. Okay. So now for the x and the y components, we have the same situation as before. These integrals are zero because we have a not function of x primed divided by an even function of x primed. So that gives you a not function of x primed integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity. So basically this integral will actually be zero. And again, by the same token, this one also will be zero. So you have odd functions integrated over symmetric intervals. And finally, I conclude that my uh, electric field will be oriented in the z direction. Let me put here the only unit vector that remains outside. This z is not integrated 
it's the observation points coordinate, so I can also take this out. And I have finally inside the integral dx prime dy prime divided by x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z squared three halves. Okay. So this is a known integral, and the result of this is 2 divided by absolute value of z, and that basically gives me z hat rho s by 2 epsilon naught. The z's cancel out. Uh, here z is positive, so therefore uh, the cancellation gives me a, a plus one, and I put it there. And you see here the result that is actually somewhat surprising that the electric field remains a constant, a constant, does not change with distance. This infinite plane has done the trick of stabilizing the electric field uh, throughout space. Obviously, this is a consequence of our unphysical assumption of a constant of a, an infinite charge distribution. So Professor Mojakati is here, so I'll stop here and we'll continue on Wednesday. Thanks for your attention. See you Wednesday.